Stephen Hawking here. Swimming is eliminated right off the bat as you wear a speedo and play in the water with other men. Secondly, I will be eliminating basketball, soccer, football, volleyball, and rugby as these games involve touching balls, which is gay. Wrestling is eliminated for A, not being real, and B, being gay as fuck. Now, of course, Sports like baseball, hockey, tennis, golf, lacrosse, croquet, polo, ping pong, cricket, and others like it are gay. This is because you are handling both a stick and balls, which is really fucking gay. In the case of hockey, it is slightly less gay than the others due to the fact that only a stick is handled. And to all of you degenerates who say that a racket isn't a stick, you're just all flat out wrong. Track and field, as well as cross country, must also be eliminated. As anyone who would wear shorts like that clearly have no respect for their own manhood. 
Despite being neutral, gymnastics must also be eliminated due to the unfortunate uniforms that men wear. Now, where does that leave us? Well, through my extensive research, I have concluded that the least gay sport in the world is solo men's figure skating. Why, you might ask? It is because the man can wear what he pleases. Additionally, there is no handling of a stick or balls involved, and most importantly, is done alone with no other men around. Therefore, solo figure skating is the least gay sport known to man.
so someone in a group asked me to tell them why I hate the ocean sunfish so much. <laughs> I care about marine life more than I care about anything else. For real. Except this big dumb idiot. I mean, it is hilarious to me, and they are the biggest joke played on Earth, but I seriously fucking hate them. The Mola Mola Sunfish. Or Ocean Sunfish. <laughs> They are the world's largest bony fish, weighing up to 5,000 pounds. And since they have very little girth, that just makes these the absolutely giant fucking dinner plates that God must have accidentally dropped while washing dishes one day and shrugged his shoulders at, because no one could have imagined this would happen. And with no purpose. Every pound of that is a wasted pound, and every foot of it is wasted space. They are so completely useless that scientists even debate how they move. Some say they just push water out of their mouths for direction. They could use their back fin, except guess what? It doesn't fucking grow. It just continually folds in on itself. So the freaking cells are being made. This piece of floating garbage just doesn't put them where they need to fucking go. So they don't have swim bladders, you know, the one thing that every fish has to make sure it doesn't just sink to the bottom of the ocean when they stop moving so they can stay right side up. This creature that can barely move to begin with can never stop its continuous tour of idiocy across the ocean or it'll fucking sink. Except when they get stuck on top of the water, which happens frequently. Because without the whole swim bladder thing, if the ocean pushes over the thinnest but largest most toppleable fish on the planet, shit out of luck. There is no creature on this earth that needs a swim bladder more than this spit in the face of nature. And yet. Some scientists have speculated that when they do that, they're absorbing energy from the sun, because no one fucking knows how they manage to get any real energy to begin with. So they need the sun, I guess. But good news. When they end up stuck like that, it gives birds a chance to land on their goddamn island of a body and eat the bugs and parasites out of its skin. Because basically, that's a migrating cesspool. Pros and cons. <laughs> They're so huge, they must at least be decent predators. No. No. The most dangerous thing about them is, as you may have guessed, their stupidity. They have caused the death of one person, because it jumped onto a boat. On a person. And in 2005, it decided to relive its mighty glory days and do it again. This time landing on a four-year-old. They mostly only eat jellyfish, because of course they do. They could only eat something that has no brain. Everything they do eat has almost zero nutritional value, and because it's so stupidly fucking big, it has to eat a ton. Dumb. And they don't have the ability to close their goddamn mouths, because their teeth are fused together. And you know what? It's good that it floats around with such a clueless expression on its face, because it is in fact clueless as all fuck. They do sometimes get eaten, but hardly. No animal truly uses them as a food source, but instead will usually just maim the fuck out of them for kicks. Seals have been seen playing with their fins like frisbees, probably the most useful thing that will ever come from them. Wow, 
Wow, you raised some good points here. This fish truly is proof that God has abandoned us. Yes, thank you. But if they're so bad at literally everything, why haven't they gone extinct? Good question. Because this thing is so fucking worthless, it doesn't realize it shouldn't exist. It is so unaware of literally fucking everything that it doesn't realize that it's doing maybe the worst fucking job of being a fish, or debatably the worst job of being a cluster of cells out of all the other clusters of cells. So what does it do? It lays the most eggs out of everything, besides some bugs. It will lay 300 million eggs at one time. 300 million. It survives because it would be statistically improbable, dare I say impossible, that there wouldn't be at least one of those 300 million left surviving at the end of the day. And this concludes why I hate the fuck out of this complete failure of evolution. If I ever see one, I'll throw rocks at it. Thank <laughs> you.